I'm going to do it down here since this has the adjustable legs. And anybody that's never owned one of these ladders that have adjustable legs, buy it. It's worth the money. These are definitely the Cadillac ladders. Drop it down. Look at it. Nobody uses that space up there and those things work awesome. Everything's up and out of their way. Um, I've had quite a people ask me about um, these, uh, these hangers here and they, they've liked them. They thought they were pretty slick. And let me tell you why we, we did them this way. One, one reason is, is since we're not, you know, I'm not really a roofer. Um, yeah, we do you know, repair on roof structures, but we're not up there a lot. So it's not something that I need accessible um, every day. So I wanted our ladders up and out of the way. Of course, we have a lot of different ladders. Some of them stay in the trailers, um, some of them in the van, but uh, the, the longer extension ladders is like, hey, I want them up and out of the way. And this is what I came up with. Right after we bought this place, I uh, put, that, put that up there. That's been up there over 10 years. And it's working perfectly. It actually has aluminum screed on the other side. Uh, this right here, and these are one person, the way I've set them up, one, one person can get these up and out of there. So I got a magnet. Let me grab my, so I set it down. So most, uh, most rafters or roof structures and garages are, especially if they're newer, they're going to be set up on 24 inches on center. So after you identify, you know, where your roof, um, uh, ceiling joist span is, you know, on this one right here, we can tell by our uh, attic access that the trusses are going this way. And so we've already identified by going up in there, it's 24 inches on the center. Now for identifying where those trusses are, just that handy magnet here will work. Now let me just come over here. It's roughly 24 inches over here. I should hit, hit a uh, right there. So we got a drywall screw right there. So I know the bottom of our truss is right there. Oh, there's another one. So it wouldn't take very long to identify where a truss is and do the same over there with a simple magnet. Now you can get those on Amazon. Um, and if you're a handyman or remodeler, uh, that, that's a must right there. You know, skip your, skip your stud finders and just use that. That'll take, do everything you need right there. And those, we keep a couple of them on their work vehicle. Uh, we don't even, Harley, we don't even keep a stud finder on there now, do we? No. That's, that's all we use. We got a couple different methods as far as identifying um, studs and this is a lot better method. And if you are worried about hurting like a painted surface, you can put a few paper towels down and go across it, um, you know, as far as identifying where the studs are or what, what have you. But so there's a couple different tricks there. But getting back to this hanger. So after I've identified 24 inches, I knew that I needed to um, build my bracket off that 24 inches. Now I could have went wider. I believe this measures 27 inches here. So I added three inches to the side of it. Um, in all actuality, after building these, I probably would have went 30 inches wide. I would have went a little bit wider. Having, having had that mounted up there for 10 years and nothing sagging or what have you, and that's a heavy duty fiberglass ladder, and I typically have a few other things um, up on top of that ladder. Uh, I believe without a doubt, we could have went a little bit wider, and that's what I would have done. I probably would have went 30 inches wider as opposed to the 27 inches. And so what that would have done, I actually got one right here because we had a couple spare ones that uh, were hanging in the center. I'm gonna put them back up there. Today's clean day, so we're, we're actually organizing a few, th few things around the garage, so let me show you what we got here. See, we're at 27 inches, end to end, and here's our 24 inches. See our 24 inches? If I would have went 30 inches wide as opposed to the 27 inches, um, it, it would have got my screws a little bit further away from right here. So it would have brought them in 
uh, an inch and a half rather. So our, my screws would have been right here and right here that would be holding it up to the, uh, the ceiling joist. Uh, so if, if I were doing this again, I probably would go 30 inches wide as opposed to my 27s that I did here. I am 10 inches um, coming off the base of there. I'm 10 inches to the center of this dowel rod. So this dowel rod here is made of poplar. Uh, so you're going to want to go with either poplar, which is a semi-hard wood, or oak. Um, I'm not sure why I went with poplar. Who knows? But uh, the, the poplars worked uh, really good. And so don't 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 trust doing this with pine. It will it will bow on you. Um, it looks like I put a touch of glue in here. Mind you, I built these quite a few years ago, but you know I've had quite a few people that have came in and noticed them. And as I was hanging these back up, I was like, I probably should share with people how I did it. So I think I just pushed them in there and uh, just put a touch of glue as they were going in. The bottom is just attached with uh i don't know if those are three or four inch screws uh but you know if you do have four inch of course you will need to pre-drill uh, you don't want to be doing any of this without pre-drilling because you will split and you will compromise your your boards without pre-drilling it and you possibly don't have to pre-drill these but even those i would probably pre-drill them uh but yeah so it works pretty well And so here's the thing, you know, we have a, a one ton pickup, it's, but, and that pickup's typically in here and it clears everything up underneath there. So these things are up and out of their way to where we can pull a vehicle in and, or whatever, or if we got to assemble some cabinets or whatever we need to do, our uh, space is wide open. So one thing I did want to bring up for most people, these are basic cuts. No, you don't need a 45, but I always do. Uh, a 45 to everything, just in the event, if you do bump into anything, adds a little bit of um, uh, cushion to it. But this right here, let me go grab a Fossner bit because not everybody's gonna know what I'm talking about. Let me, let me go grab it. All right, so this is, a, this is a Fossner bit set. Now you don't, most anybody that's into woodworking's knowing what I'm holding here. And it actually has the different sizes right here. So there's an inch and a quarter. You can buy these individual. Uh, one thing I will say is we actually, we are remodelers. This is typically considered a tool for a, uh, what would you say? This is for a cabinet builder, more of your finished woodworker. Uh, and I say we do do a lot of that, but I tell you what we use a lot of these for. We use these a lot on decks. Now I do realize our decks are on a different level than, than other people's. We like to do a lot of finish work on them, but this actually is on our work van now. We, we found so many uses for them as far as recess and different bolts, um, giving that finished look for them. And I, it would not surprise me I'm almost without for um, I'm almost for certain that I used uh, the Fossner bit on that to bore that hole. And I can tell this this was done with a Fossner bit. Come look at it, as opposed to a hole saw, because look at how clean that joint is. Or, around or even spade bit. A spade bit. I just we use spade bits a lot more now, but I typically those are not. My go-to bit. They're not a finish. Yeah, they're yeah. definitely not. But you could have done that, and I'm glad you brought that up. I could have. You could easily do this with a um, uh, shoot. A person could get a uh, a two-dollar speed bit, yeah. an inch and a quarter. I, I'm glad he brought that up. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't have a spade bit here, but uh, yeah, you can you can buy just a cheap uh, inch and a quarter speed bit and knock them out. I totally forgot about it. All right. All right, so I want you guys to see, I'm at a slim, you guessed the weight, but <laughs> I really don't know, but <laughs> we'll say I'm north of 200. I'll say that. Probably north of 240. Um, I trust this thing. I think I do. 
Yeah. I think we're good to go. Oh yeah. See? Yeah, so if uh, whatever you put up there, <laughs> if you put it together right, make sure you, you're, you're using good screws. Um, you know, I, we're using four inch from there going up in to the uh, truss or rafters. Uh, the reason is, remember that drywall, um, if it's done appropriately, is supposed to be five eighths drywall. So you're losing five eighths. So the screws that go up into the rafters or trusses have to be four inch screws these right here that attach uh, the vertical member to the uh, horizontal two by six i think i put them together with three inch screws almost for certain and i i know that those were strong enough that's uh three per side there again pre-drilled them just like a 764 or eighth eighth inch drill bit uh to to relieve that pine if you don't, it's going to split and you've totally compromised it. So, all right, there you guys go. You got one awesome uh, uh, ladder holder and you can park anything. I mean, we got a, we got a fairly new Ram pickup that costs basically what a house does. So if you think I'm pulling that underneath here and not trusting what I'm, the, what I got up there, uh, you better, better believe we, we trust what we put up there. So, all right, hit that subscribe button, come back for more, and we'll show you how Confident Home Solution does things.